The trim tool is a powerful way to cut your long video clips down to size in CyberLink PowerDirector 16. In this episode, I'm going to show you how it works. In previous episodes, I walked you through the process of editing your video in PowerDirector 16. If you're new to PowerDirector 16, click the link in the upper right corner of this video for a complete playlist and start learning from the first episode. Before I move on, if you want to learn more about using PowerDirector, click the little Cartoon Jeff on screen right now to subscribe and click that little bell icon so you'll be notified when I post again. Also, if you want to buy PowerDirector, please use the link in the description below. If you do, CyberLink will contribute to this channel at no extra cost to you. Thanks for supporting the channel. When I fly a job site to get progress video, I start the camera at takeoff and shut it off when I land, so I record the entire flight, even though I only use small pieces of what I shoot. People quite often use action cams the same way. You can use Split Tool to cut down these long video files, but once you try the Trim Tool, you'll see it is a much easier and more effective way to cut your video down to size. Here is a PowerDirector file. I've imported one media file, which is a 5 minute video taken at 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. I've added this clip to the timeline. Now, click on the clip to highlight it and you see the scissors icon appears. This is the Trim Tool. Click the icon and a new window appears. At the top, you have a single trim tab and a multi trim tab. Let's choose the multi trim tab. We have four sections to this window. At the top, obviously, is the preview screen where you can view your video. Beneath that is a timeline like you have in the regular preview screen. It displays the entire clip from start to finish like the one you're used to, but it looks a little different. It has this blue box around it. Notice that as I scrub through the video, this blue box moves forward and backwards with me. The blue box is called the magnification window. Look below the magnification window and you'll see how it's used. Down here you have another timeline, but this timeline only shows a portion of the entire clip. What you see on this bottom timeline is the portion of the top timeline that is included in the magnification window. It serves as a magnified view of your start to finish timeline to allow you to zoom in on what you're working on so you can make extremely precise cuts right where you want them. You can change the scale of this magnification a few ways. If you drag in on the sides of the box, you see the timeline is zooming in even more because it's showing a smaller segment of the entire clip. Or you can drag it out to decrease the scale of magnification. You can also change the scale of what the box includes. It defaults to showing a portion of the video with thumbnails in 10 second increments. Each increment is marked with the time and a thumbnail. You can increase magnification by clicking on the magnifying lens plus icon. Now it's in 5 second increments. Notice how the magnification window got shorter? Click again and it's 1 second increments for the thumbs. Click again and we're looking at thumbnails in increments of 5 frames of video. At 30 frames per second, the blue box is now showing a little more than 1 second of video. Click again and you're seeing a frame by frame sequence with only 10 frames of video in the blue box at any time. In this magnification, you can click on any thumbnail to select an exact point to start or stop a clip, right down to the specific frame if you need that level of precision. I'll use the magnifying lens minus icon to zoom back out to 10 second increments. To move the magnification window around the timeline, you can click and drag it to where you want. Or you can click on these forward and back arrows and the box will move forward or back by one increment in the magnification window. If you're set for 10 second increments, a click will move the box forward 10 seconds and so on. Beneath this magnified timeline, we see two rows of buttons. Let's start at the bottom. The original and output buttons I'll demonstrate in a moment. To the right of those, we have buttons to play and stop the video and buttons to move forward or back one frame at a time. Then to the right of that you see a number counter to show where you are in the clip. The row above this is where you actually do your trimming commands. This button with the arrows pointing right and left, I'll explain that in a minute. Next you have two buttons that look like squared off apostrophes. 
The one to the left is the button that begins a selection called Mark In. The next one is the button that ends a selection called Mark Out. What we're going to do is work through this video clip and select the pieces we want by positioning the playhead, then hitting the Mark In button, moving to the end of that scene and hitting the Mark Out button. We'll go through the entire clip, marking in and out to designate the pieces we want to keep. Let's try it out. Now normally I'd go through the clip and mark in and out as I previewed it, but to speed this tutorial up I've already made a list of some segments that I want to keep. I hit the stop button to return the playhead to the beginning of the timeline. My first segment starts at about 28 seconds. Let's move the playhead to about that point and hit play. When the drone moves forward, that's where my segment starts, so I'll pause it there. I hit the Mark In button, and you see the Mark In icon appears on both versions of the timeline. Now I hit play again. I'll stop when the camera passes the rust-colored silos. Okay, I hit pause again. I hit the Mark Out button, and the Mark Out icon shows up on both timelines. Notice the timeline between the marks is blue and the rest of the timeline is gray. It's showing me exactly what I have selected. My next spot is at around 1 minute 30 seconds in, so I'll scrub things forward to that point. Let's hit play. When the drone starts to move, I hit pause, mark in, hit play and let it run till the drone stops. I went a little far. I changed my magnification to one second. Now I can easily go back to 1 minute 44 seconds, then move in one frame at a time until the motion stops. I don't need to be this exact in this situation. I'm just showing you that you can be this precise when you need to be. There, I'm at the exact frame where I want to stop. I hit Mark Out and the Mark Out icon appears on the timelines. Now you see two segments of the timeline are in blue. Let's do the next a little more quickly. It starts around 2 minutes and 22 seconds. I change magnification to move faster, then navigate to around 2 minutes and 21 seconds or so. Hit play. I want it just as the drone starts to rotate. Pause. Back it up a little. Mark in, let it run. Pause, mark out. One more time, let's move to two minutes and 56 seconds. Find the start, pause, mark in, navigate to around 3 minutes and 23 seconds. Find the end, pause, mark out. It's that simple to use the trim tool. Now let's talk about these other buttons. Along the bottom we have Original and Output. If you choose Original and hit Play, it shows the entire clip. If you choose Output, it shows what your selected portions look like, like this. See how it jumps to each selection? Now, one row up. We have the arrows pointing right or left. 
typically you have it pointing right. That means the segments you're selecting are the ones you want to keep. But let's say you wanted to keep most all of your video and just remove a few spots. You can make your selections, then hit this button like this. Now you see on the timeline the selected areas are being cut out and the non-selected areas are being kept. I'm going to switch that back to the way we had it. One more thing about multi-trim view. Look along the right side. You can see a summary of the segments we've selected in this column. If I decided that I didn't want to keep one of these, I could select it and hit the trash can at the bottom and that selection would go away. We're ready to finish our trimming. Hit the OK button. Now all of our segments are clipped out and ready for use on the timeline. So that was the Trim Tools Multi-Trim tab. Very quickly I'll show you the Single Trim tab for the Trim Tool. Select a clip, then hit the Trim icon. Now at the top of the screen choose Single Trim. This view looks similar to Multi-Trim view with a few things missing. The magnification window is gone from the timeline as is the magnified timeline. You can use this view to select a single segment from your clip that you want to keep. As before, you can move the playhead to your start point, mark in, then move it to the finish point and mark out to create the two ends of your segment. You can also choose the start and finish for your segment by putting in a specific time in the in position and out position boxes here to the right. Notice that as I change the times in these boxes, the in and out markers change on the timeline. The single trim view also has this lock icon. Once you set your in and out points, you can lock the duration of the segment by hitting this icon. Now you can slide your segment around the timeline and its duration will remain the same. Once you've made your selection, hit OK and your clip will be trimmed for use in your PowerDirector project. That's it for the trim tool. Practice a few times with it and you'll find it to be your favorite way to clip out your long video segments. Thanks for watching. Remember, sharing is caring. If you would share this video on social media, I would really appreciate your help. On screen, you'll find a link to the complete playlist of PowerDirector 16 video editing tutorials, so please check them out. If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to this channel so you know when more videos are released. Next video coming soon.